Hello and welcome. My name is David Karofsky with the Family Business Consulting Group. I have the honor today of speaking with Karen Hoskin from the Montagna Distillery out in Crested Butte, Colorado. And in today's world with some of the challenges that we're having, Karen saw a tremendous opportunity to shift her business to help people beyond Crested Butte, Colorado. So Karen, welcome and, and thanks for taking some time today. Thank you, it's a pleasure. So Karen, give us a little bit of history. So I know you were, you were founded in 2008, you're a family business, woman owned, which I think is just awesome. It's a growing trend that we're seeing in family businesses. Give us a little bit of the history and kind of how you came to be. Well, I have been a fanatic about good rum for about 32 years. Um, I'm not much of a drinker, but I absolutely love rum. And so, uh, when I decided to shift careers about 12 years ago, um, I thought, what do I love? What do I want to do? And I thought, I love rum. And, and there's a boom coming in craft distilling around America and probably around the world. And I want to get on that, that train and see where it takes me. So 12 years later, it's been quite a ride. <laughs> so, and how far does the business expand at this point? I was doing a little bit of reading, but you know, obviously you're going well beyond Colorado. Tell us a little bit about, about your reach. So I ship rum all over the world now. Um, I just this morning was uh, landing a shipment in London. We're launching with a new distributor in the UK. Um, we are in the process of shipping a lot of rum to the Netherlands. We ship to North Dakota, South Dakota, you know, Tennessee, um, but our biggest markets in the U.S. are our biggest market in the U.S. is Colorado. Um, so we still are very a home state product. Um, we love our home turf, but we um, we have a lot of interest in the product from all around as rum becomes kind of a big thing. And maybe even more so right now, <laughs> yeah. given, given the world, and maybe it helps us get through our day a little bit too. Nothing wrong with that. Alcohol sales are up 50% in America right now. Yeah, it's, it is, shifts. It's, it's, unbe it's unbelievable and, and certainly not surprising. Uh, so, you know, kind of leading into that, we, we certainly have some challenges in the world today. And you know, one of the things I've often been talking about with some of my clients and, and even some of these videos is every challenge creates an opportunity. And the question is, what's your opportunity? And I think you guys have seen an opportunity uh, more to really help the world or the community and if you can just tell us how you've shifted what you're doing right now with respect to that, that would be great. So well, the number one thing we make as a company is alcohol. And, you know, we think of that in terms of rum and other people think of whiskey and vodka and uh, other types of spirits. Um, but at the end of the day, alcohol is the number one ingredient in antiviral cleaners and sanitizers. Um, so, I think we we know that because we use our own products to clean our facilities. Um, so when we make rum, we keep a certain percentage of what we make and we clean all kinds of things in our facilities with that, our chalkboards, our you know bathrooms, et cetera. So um, it was just <coughs> such an easy leap to know that we uh, could also make antivirals cleaners for other purposes. Yep. Um, so many craft distilleries in America began to realize that that was possible. Um, I was maybe one of the ones that was a little more hesitant about the compliance and the human safety and, you know, all the various different regulatory entities that we have to think about. But I've also been really part of pushing for the approvals of those entities so that those of us who are doing it you know, the right way can get into that business safely and carefully. Um, so that was, we're now on our third big batch of antiviral sanitizer. And how is it now being used? Is that being then put into hand sanitizers and whatnot? Or how is it being distributed or in what, in what form? So we make it into an antiviral surface cleaner okay. and alcohol spray. So I chose personally um, because I have an autoimmune disease, not to make hand sanitizer. Um, I c have concerns personally about human beings slathering their skin with 80% alcohol all day, every day, especially yeah. the frontline medical people. Um, soap and water works really well for that. Yep. 
Um, so I made a decision very early on that I wanted to make a product that would uh, sanitize surfaces and ambulances and things like that. Um, so we've been donating all of our antiviral cleaners to the Gunnison County Incident Command Center. That's the center of all of our response throughout the county to the coronavirus outbreak. Um, so they are coordinating EMS and fire and uh, law enforcement and hospital and um, testing facilities and um, mobile clinics and you know every every level of response. So our cleaners have now gone to the post office actually and the bus system, um, frontline organizations that are, we're trying to keep open Good. for functionality. Um, they are being used in the ambulances and the um, hospitals and um, gosh, even like the uh, incident command center, they've been using it on their own, you know, offices and, and um, they have a lot of people coming and going all day who are on the front lines of the response. So basically if anybody is dealing with coronavirus, then they are eligible to get this donation of uh, surface cleaners from us. You know, I know, I know just from a little bit that we've talked about prior to even shooting this, that giving back is a huge component of your, your value system, your philosophy. It's, it's on your website, giving back to the community. You know, the fact that, that, that you're doing this really at, at the expense of your business to be able to provide this, I think is an incredibly special thing. I know that the coronavirus is, has hit home a little bit in your community and in the world of Crested View. Um, you've known some people that have become ill. Uh, that have even passed away, unfortunately. Karen, what are some of the other things that, that you're doing to, to help the greater community as, as well? So I've, I've really made a decision to focus on a little bit more internally. We have 30 employees, and um, I felt very strongly that all of them could be really horribly impacted right now, especially if I laid them all off, yep, yep. Um, especially if you know, their, their lives were attached to their health benefits with my company. It was a really terrible time for people to lose access to their health insurance um, or to have to go on, you know, other types of health insurance that might have been not as robust as what we offer. Yep. Um, so I, one of the first things I did was let my employees know that we would not be laying anyone off and that I was going to leverage everything I could um, with the fe federal stimulus, but also we improved a lot of our benefits for our employees. So we added every single employee, whether they have benefits or not, can access telemedicine. Um, so if they feel like they can't go see a doctor easily, we're, we're trying to make sure that they don't take a very minor underlying health condition and turn it into a major health outcome because they put off important health care during this time. Um, we have been donating to a number of different entities in our local community, like having staff buy groceries for elderly folks and um, yeah. do grocery deliveries, do prescription deliveries, all with good separations and good protocols. But, you know, just whatever small things we can but we've also had six or seven staff go down hard with coronavirus mm. and so we also leverage some resources within to you know take care of them uh really in a in a heartfelt way like what can we do for you today we brought distilled water for someone's humidifier we brought you know picked up essential oils for someone we picked up groceries and prescriptions and you know it just feels good because Truthfully, the antiviral thing is awesome, but it feels like such a small contribution when you're thinking about doctors and nurses and uh, ambulance drivers who are so on the front lines 24 um, seven. That's a pretty tiny contribution. So we wanted to do more as well. You know, it's, it's so, we're seeing communities all over the world step up and in, in different ways uh, from what you're doing to, you know, just, LL Beans making masks and, and you know all these different pieces and I, I just think it's 
it's an it's an amazing story. Um, you know, as you probably well know, family businesses are the lifeblood of the American economy. Uh, it just represents you know well over seventy percent of our GDP, employs over fifty percent of the people in the country, and it is I believe it is our job as family businesses to to step up and and help as much as we can, and to shift what we're doing. And what you guys are doing is a wonderful story. And I just thank you so much for being with me today and sharing this. Uh, if people want to learn more about your business, where where can they go? Because I, I certainly anticipate clicking glasses with you over a, over a shot of rum when we're through this. Uh, but where can people go to learn more? Well, I'm originally a New Englander. So ah. you know, I've got a lot of, of heartfelt passion for, for New England. I went to college there. I grew up there. Um, so montanyarum.com, and we spell Montanya M-O-N-T-A-N-Y-A, and that's rum.com. So that's the best way to find us. That's how to connect to our social network, how to figure out where to buy the, the rum. Great. Uh, we have a lot of distribution around the nation, so almost everybody can probably figure out a way to get a bottle. Excellent. And come see us in Crested Butte when all of this blows over because we're going to enjoy being I will be together. there. <laughs> yeah. I will be there. It, it is an amazing town. That is for sure. I just, I just love it there. Um, well, thank you again for being, uh, for being here today. Uh, I'm David Karofsky with the Family Business Consulting Group. If you want to learn more about us, you can visit us at our website, www.thefbcg.com. Thanks.